welcome back to Buzzing Threads. I've been working on a new quilt, so I thought I'd guide you through some of the early stages of producing that quilt. I've decided to do another fox. I did a fox a little while ago, and I've got some improvements I want to make on the fox that I did before. I've sketched it out in coloured pencil to give me an idea of what I want to do. So you've got the outline, I've got the colours roughly planned out and kind of looked at the texture of the fox's fur. So one of the reasons for deciding to do another fox is because I really love that texture that you get from the fur and I want to have a go at really recreating this well in thread painting. I'm going to use relatively plain fabric this time because the focus of this piece of work is really on the thread painting and I want that to sing rather than the fabric. From my sketch I then went on to do an outline of it so I've just traced this onto some thin paper and then I've planned out the different blocks of colour that I'm going to do. I've tried not to make the pieces too small because they're going to be really fiddly if I do, but I want a bit of variation brought in by the fabric. So then I've traced the pieces onto um, heat and bond. It's a really thin heat and bond because I don't want it to add thickness and stiffness to the quilt, so I've used just an ultra thin one. I've then ironed it onto my fabric of choice and then here you go I've cut them all out and, and I'm ready to start piecing together. As my backing for my piecing I like to use a bit of muslin this means that it's really lightweight and again this is something that's not going to add thickness and stiffness to my quilt and the advantage also is that you can see through it. So when I'm piecing what I'm doing is putting my uh, drawing behind the muslin so that I can see the picture through it. I tape it into position, um, trying to make sure that the muslin's really tight and, and I can position my pieces really accurately then. So here you go, now I'm off starting to piece together the different pieces and bond them onto my muslin backing. When I cut out the pieces ready to, for piecing, I try and plan in what kind of order I'm going to stick them down. The reason is because on the lower pieces, I allow a bit of overlap with the next piece, so that if I don't position them quite perfectly, there won't be any muslin showing through with little gaps. So I've got a little bit of overlap. In some cases I haven't really decided what order I'm going to put it together, in which case I just leave a little bit round the whole piece and then I can trim that off as I'm going along um, piecing it together. Now as the more pieces get stuck onto the backing fabric it becomes more difficult to see the image behind, so in addition to having the background that I'm sticking it onto, I've also got an overlay which is tracing paper that I then position over the top at intervals just to check that I'm happy with how everything is positioned. It really depends how complicated the quilt is to how important this is. Now with the fox it's not too bad so I'm actually finding I'm finding that I don't actually have to use the overlay too much for this piece of work, but sometimes I'm moving it back and forth, forth after every piece that I stick down. I'm pretty happy with how all this is coming together as I add in all the pieces, but even if you're not happy at this stage, you don't need to worry too much because the thread painting is going to add so much to your image. So I've speeded up the footage a bit because obviously it's quite a slow process adding on the different pieces but all in all I would say that it took me 30 minutes to piece together the fox. Obviously the bigger and more complicated the piece that you're working on the longer it's going to take. However if you can at least be organised and have everything ready when you're doing it then it speeds up the process. Although I'm largely self-taught, 
I have got a couple of books that I've used to help me learn the method as I was going on. I'll put the details of those books in the description below. One of them's called Point Click Quilt, um, Turn Your Photos into Fabulous Fabric Art. And the other one is called Impressionist Applique. For anyone who's less arty than me, they do have pictures in them that you can then use to create your own quilt, in which case you don't have to go through the whole drawing out and designing process like I have. But these books really opened me up to the idea of actually through fabric you can actually create something which is a very artistic image. I really love the abstract nature of working with fabric but what you're actually producing really looks like the image that you've based it on. I tend to always work in raw edge applique, it's much quicker to produce but there is some information in the Impressionist applique book about um, folding under, doing the turned edge applique. I have tried this method and I really like the clean, crisp edge that you get to the fabric, but I just find that it takes a long time and the rough edge that you get on the raw edge applique, it doesn't bother me, so I have decided to stick with that largely. So here you go, here's the fox ready for the next stage which is the thread painting and hopefully I'll be back soon to guide you through how I do that. Thanks for watching, bye for now.